Listen as your day unfolds. Challenge what the future holds. Try and keep your head up to the sky. Shalom, family. Hi, it's me again, Tuchi, the Nigerian Empress. Yeah. <laughs> thank you again for tuning in today uh, i know i talk about locks and you know all of that so i decided okay let me switch things up today and talk about something fun <laughs> uh today i'll be talking about yes wait for it six things every black girl woman should know yes i went there i went there today get ready tighten your seat belts it's time for some real talk we're going to really talk today Serious talk. Yes. Disclaimer. These are my opinions. Okay. <laughs> my opinions. So nobody should come for me. These are my own perspective from things that I have gleaned from this little thing called my short span of life. Wisdom that I've learned from my mom, my aunts, and I've decided to, to make it as concise as possible to share with you. Okay. So one of the first thing every black girl should know my dear darling you are an individual oh yes in the african setting we're, we're very communal yeah so you either belong to a club or a church a society a school whatever it is you know because we're social creatures okay so we like to work together in a community and all of that and that saying holds true very true in the African setting or blacks, whatever, that it takes a village to raise a child. So yes, excuse me. We had plenty of those when we were growing up. Those Olofufu aunties and uncles who will be watching you instead of minding their own business. They will be watching you, trying to see what you are doing so that they can go and report to their mommy and the daddy. How people like us got into a lot of trouble because of all those aunties. So yes, they have their uses too, right? And another thing is that we all contribute something. Like I talked about the village gossip. It's a contribution, yes. It is helping to keep the children in check. Everybody has to figure out what they bring to the table. The day I knew for a fact that this thing called life, we are now own, was the day I was giving birth to my first child. <laughs> yes, so I was there and the nurses everything husband was there comforting me oh my wife is good you're going to it's going to be all it was okay it was okay it was okay until it was time to push that baby i knew that no matter how much my husband loved me or how much my mother was praying at all my sister and my family that baby that is inside that thing that is trying to tear me into two he's only me that we bring it out so on that day, I knew for a fact that you all you know, nobody's going to help you. I'm not saying that, you know, we are living a lonely life and all of that. No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that at the end of the day, you have to define who you are for yourself. Nobody's going to help you. Mm. Yes, so nobody's going to help you. You're going to have to figure it out yourself. That day when you're going to look inside the mirror, who are you? Yes. We are not all feminists, though. We are not all church members, so we are not all in the same music group. Oh. That is not what is going to matter when it all comes down. And for those of us who are believers of Yeshua and followers of the God of the Bible, we already know that that wonderful day, we shall stand before the presence of the Father and we shall give account for everything that we have done. You are not going to come before him as a group. No. You are not going to come before him as a group of black people, a group of uh, shush people, a group of... No, you are going to stand by yourself and you are going to give account. Okay? So, so what I'm trying to say is that beautiful black woman, beautiful black girl, you are an individual. Okay? Yes. So number two, you are beautiful. The father did not make a mistake in making you as you are. Last time I checked, the Bible tells us that it created us in his image and likeness. And the meaning of that word means that you look like him. You are created like him. Okay? And it is not by mistake that you are the color that you have. Don't ever, ever allow anybody to tell you that. Okay? So, let us now begin to accept who we are. Let us use me as an example. I have to accept the fact that I have a ginormous forehead. I have to accept the fact that 
my nose does not have a bridge. I have to accept the fact that I have a flat bum bum, funny hips and bow legs. Yes, so after realizing that, okay, these are my, because I grew up in Ibadan city, that is with Yoruba people, and Yoruba women hmm, have this generous derriere. Oh, oh Lord. Beautiful hips, they're just beautiful, pear-shaped women. So that is what you are looking at every day. So you are looking at your funny thin hips and wondering, ah, now wow, God, now what for you? <laughs> How you just made somebody like this? But instead of focusing on that, I decided to focus on my what? Assets. Almost got into trouble. I almost got fired for that too. And with what we have on the internet now, there are so many ways that you can dress up, you know, yourself to look is you know presentable to look beautiful so if you have like big boobs you know you can always dress it up to look nice you know and shine that your thing that god has given you you use it to blind everybody there yes ah you have to do that one no i'm not saying you should put it out there for everybody to see that's not that is not what i'm trying to say right here okay so my mom used to see something you know nowadays nobody should has any excuse to be ugly with makeup, with clothes, with things that we can do to our hair these days, you don't have any excuse to be thinking that you're ugly. You're not ugly. Oh. Talk to the right cosmetologist, or you know, just do some a little bit research. You'll be surprised how, when you put all of that together, how beautiful you are. Okay, the Lord has given you the wisdom and all that that you would need to be that person you're supposed to be. Number three, you are intelligent. Yes, you are intelligent. The Lord has given you a mind. You have the responsibility to develop it be transformed by the renewing of your mind don't conform to popular concepts of what you should be all about be transformed with the renewing of your mind okay and how do you do that how do you renew your mind how do you develop your mind okay apart from school that we are they send us to hear something from the time we are sharing there are books that you can read i was you know blessed to be with parents who were voracious readers okay and we got that experience that opportunity to read wide and so we were encouraged to that way develop my especially the fact that hmm, we were not allowed to go to parties we were not allowed to go to friends house we we're not allowed to do any of that stuff so our form of escape were books and movies okay yes I'm very visual, right? I don't read self-help book. Let me be confessing to you. I don't read self-help book. That one does not make any sense to me. I don't know. It's, it's just too abstract. It's too abstract for me. If you're trying to tell me something, tell me in a story. That's just the way my mind works, you know? I don't know if... I know there are lots of people there who read a lot of self-help books and non-fiction. Mm -mm. If you want to tell me something, tell me in a story. Or tell it to me in a film. That way I'm, that way I'm able to understand what you're trying to say. Okay, and I'm sure there are many of us like that. Yeah, so we grew up with things like TV shows as well. It helped so many of us growing up, especially because my father died when I was 14. So, you know, we are watching all those TV shows and it kind of gave us an idea of who a father should be. What is the role of a father or what's the role of a man in a house? What is the role of a mother in a house? So get you a couple of friends. You guys sit down together and watch a movie and then afterwards sit down and then break it down. That's what me and my sister used to do. We'll sit down and tear that film to pieces. Not criticize it, but you know, what did you see? Ah, in that scene, you see the way that man said that thing? What do you think he was trying to say? What do you think? Wait, wait, okay, when he said that, what do you think he meant? You know those kind of things? So you're sitting down and you'll be surprised how much wisdom and knowledge you can get from that kind of setting get you a couple of friends get you some um, some wine sit down watch the movies you know and then just have fun you'll be surprised what your mind's eyes can see so yeah at the end of the day you're intelligent you're intelligent you're smart you just don't believe it yet so chama is here to tell you you have what it takes hope dear mm -hmm. number four you are wealthy and see inside that your head inside that your body you have what it takes to be a multi 
billionaire. Yes, yeah, Ben, he must obey. That is, that's right. That's what, that's right. Not all of us are going to be like Cleopatra, who used her hoo hoo to cause trouble in the Roman Empire. Where two kings, Caesar, Mark Anthony, them, were held bound with that her hoo hoo power. He's not all of us that have that kind of uh, skill. He's not all of us are like Helen of Troy that can cause war because of hoo hoo power. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So you have to figure out because that's the easiest thing I do. I know I have considered this where things are really hard, things are really tough. Yes, I will confess I have thought about using using my body to get money. But say uh, ah, that thing is a lot of work. Oh. The girls who do it, I have um, powerful respect for all of you because it's not just that thing that you are using to hold that man. Look at Olivia Pope. Now let's not go too far. Look at Olivia Pope. You know, fine, she have the uh, kryptonite hoo hoo, eh? But that man cannot make a move that is defeat Gerald, that is the president, whatever, you know. He cannot make a move without hearing her. She says, go, he's going. She says, come, he's coming. You know, that kind of thing. He was ready to go. Remember that season, that episode where he was ready to go to war because of her? Ah. So it means that she had that thing inside with her brain. So apart from kryptonite hoo hoo, she have the brains. That is plenty work, I beg, I beg. So since of some of us are not like that, we're not gifted in that area, so we have to figure out with our own brain what it is that we are good at. What is, some of us, you because know, my mom believed in education, my parents believed in education, oh, well, just finish your books and that's how you're going to, you know, be able to feed yourself. Some of us thought it like, well, I'm sure there are other ways, you know, you're looking at all these music stars, that ah, they are singing and they are making money, this one is playing ball and is making money. It's not all of us that have that gift and talent. I'm just telling you. So, if you know that you do not have that gift, you do not have that talent, can we try and look for other ways to make this money? Because mm. you have to find a way. Marrying is not a game plan. Some people are blessed that will they will find one rich man, marry them, they don't have to work again for the rest of their life. But it's not all of us that are gifted or blessed, that are going to be blessed like that. So, whatever it is here, yeah, Whatever it is that you see your hand doing, don't look down on it. Oh. Even if it's to cook, some of you can cook, eh? Angels will be crying when they taste it. Use that thing. Find a way of packaging it and selling it. Is that not what these other people are doing? Ah. So they don't have to add, how we say it in Nigeria, they don't have to add. It is the same head that God gave you that you have to. So you have to find a way of, even if it's craft, even if it's jewelry making, even if it's painting, please, oh, if you're a painter, you're an illustrator. I, I, I'm writing children's books and I need somebody who can draw very well. Hey, hey. So like that, you can make money. Simple. See, I understand the nine to five saying you need to have a job and all of that. That's a steady paycheck and everything. But like Miles Monroe said, don't go and be building somebody else's dream and yours is in tatters. You cannot be doing that, though. And we are getting to that stage in our lives where we cannot be raising children that, oh, you should read your book so that somebody will give you a job. You can see now that that is not the case at all. So we have to, and the children are watching us. So we can be saying whatever we are saying, but they are watching us. And it's from things that we are doing that they are going to copy and it's going to form who they are. So my sister, you have what it takes. Don't let the situation or your past or the society or the system or whatever it is that is telling you that you cannot do it is a big fat lie. They don't have two heads. Yes, all those people that are sitting on the board of directors, they don't have two heads. They have the same number of brain cells as you. And if you're not careful, because of your melanin, yes, honey, because of your melanin, you have magical powers. You have what it takes. Especially the fact that you have to work four times as hard to survive in this uh, Babylon system. Can you imagine? And <laughs> let's not even go there. So, Auntie, find that thing that you are good at. Develop it, package it, sell it. That is the way we are going now, nowadays. Mm. Yes, making dress is okay. But along the line, you'll figure it out. Yes, you will. Hello, there's no, this is not, this life is not hard like that. It's not hard like that. If you will just have the boldness on the inside of you, ha. There's nothing that you cannot do. Okay. Yes. Now let's talk about men.